All right, welcome to Cooped Up episode four. And on this week, Frank Stevenson's mini design. Ethan's going to give us a quick story about how the uh, R52, 53 generation minis were designed by American designer Frank Stevenson. We'll go over some news stories, pick our social picks of the week, and tell you what we have coming up on our channels. So my name is Nick, and I'm the host of the Mini Vlog on YouTube and Instagram. And I just kind of share what it's like to uh, live life with minis. Um, I have two myself, so that's where you can find me. And uh, Ethan, where can we find you? So my name is Ethan, and you can find me on Instagram and YouTube at Car Creations. Uh, my channel we have we do BMW and Mini retro retrofits, as well as Top Gear style specials these days. So uh, come join us over there. All right, so the story this week, we're going to be discussing the inspiration for the design of the new Mini by American designer Frank Stevenson. So when designing this Mini, the, they wanted the look to be what the old one, but um, they wanted the look to be of the old one, but evolutionized for the future. Um, obviously, the Mini hadn't changed for since its birth, so they wanted to go with something that looked like it had been had gone through a design evolution every 10 years. So they needed to make it look compact and like a mini. However, on the inside, they needed to make it modern and roomy and airy and basically make it a, a nice car to be in. So if you look at the car, it's kind of split into three main sections, which he called it a three-tiered cake. So you have the roof, and then you have the windows, and you have the side, the bar. Um, so they wanted to keep the line by the front. So I don't know if you have a picture here, but there's a quite obvious um, little tuck where they have the hood and the side of the car connect together. They wanted to keep that line alive for the new ones. So what they ended up doing was creating this clamshell bonnet that we know today and this hood wraps all around the side and then around the front as well and this kind of gave it the same sort of lines there as the original minis did so that's the, um, is, is that this is that the seam uh seam, seam line that we see in the classic minis where they're kind of welded two pieces together is that kind of what they want yeah. to bring over ah okay yeah. so that's what, kind of where we got the clamshell then from Trying to yeah. that seam line. Interesting. Yeah. Did not know. And that. not not many cars at that time even had a clamshell bonnet. So it was it was quite a design leap. Yeah. For uh Mini. Yeah. Yeah. Um one of the other things that they changed um from the original one was the headlights. So not as much on the original design refresh that um Frank worked on, but even but a lot more so nowadays. But you can see how the headlights are pushed back a lot more. And that was because of aerodynamics. So as much as they wanted the headlights to be right up and down like the current one, it would it made a lot more sense from an aerodynamic point of view to have them slanted backwards. Mm, okay. So then we come to what he wanted the car to look like. So... He wanted to make sure that it resembled the English Bulldog. And so if you look all over the car, it has this Bulldog stance. So the first place that when you see a Mini coming towards you is its um, grill. And what he did here was create the top bit of the grill smaller. And then he cut a line through it and made the lower part bigger and fatter that stuck out to give it kind of a... Uh, underbite look like, like a, a bulldog. Like a jaw, yeah, okay. I see it now. That, that makes sense. Yeah. And the S-Series moved a little bit away from this, but with the new facelift ones that we just came out, um, I think they're the 2022 models, um, it, it kind of brought that back a little bit. Right, it gives, cool. the, gives that bulldog a little bit of a handlebar mustache too, but yeah, yeah, I yeah. see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So... Um, he, he, he was a very classic designer, having uh, worked on uh, that Maserati super, er, supercar. I can't remember what it was called. I should know. Um, as well as the McLaren P1 and also a few other cars. 
Um, so he really knew how to design a classic, timeless car. Mm. And one of the things that he did was if you um, follow all the lines in the car that lead anywhere, they actually all slope upwards to a, a point above the above the Mini, which kind of gave it a sense of stability on the road. Um, he also, if you, uh, I don't know if I have a picture of it, but if you put the golden law portions over the uh, car. Oh, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that actually he tried to design it around there as well. So oh. it kind of, with all the curved panels, um, with those different proportions, it gave it a nice flowing look and made it more enjoyable to look at, which is super cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. He's uh, I, obviously professional using the golden aspect ratio and everything like that. And I do get where, the, where all those lines kind of flow to a point. It does seem like they all kind of go up towards the back, maybe above the uh, above the, yeah. uh, above the uh, antenna, maybe. It seems to be where they kind of meet. But yeah, that's... Did he did, did he work for Mini at the time, or was he just hired by Mini to help with the design? Do you know? No. Uh, I don't want to say 100% because I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure he was just hired to okay. help design sure. it. Yeah. Um, so then the other... So then if you go to the back... So we talked a little bit about the front. So if you go to the back, um, he created two strong design elements that also kind of gave this car an identity. So if you look at the placement of the taillights of the original Mini, there's actually a space between the taillight and the um, boot line. Um, at the time, this was actually impossible to manufacture, but uh, many from the designs worked on a way to manufacture it, and it was a key part of the first gen minis. Um, and once again, this was trying to quit, uh, create a low down, um, wide stance on the road to make it look, make it look like a mini and mm. a bulldog too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then finally, the other um, important design aspect of the back of the car was the uh, was the sh he called it uh, shoulders or haunches. Um, he you can kind of see how he widened them up, and then also on the the, the, the cutout where the boot is, it's kind of um, instead of most cars, it's kind of rectangular. He kind of stretched it out. And it kind of made the car look more planted on the road. So, yeah, that's pretty much the story that I have here. Um, obviously, the minis that we have now are its kind of interesting. They're quite different from that. I would be interested to see what he think of, thinks of what they did to his design. But, yeah. Yeah. Is it, time. Do you, I'm assuming he's still alive. Do you, do you know that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, okay. um, he has has he has his own YouTube channel, um, and he has some amazing videos, um, super easy to watch, and um, he talks about designing the Mini, talks about designing um, the McLaren P1 and all those cars, and then he also critiques other people's designs and other car market. So, I did not know that. I have to check out that YouTube channel. I'll I will put yeah. a link in the, in this description below so you everybody else can check it out. That's pretty cool. I'll, I'll definitely stay up late tonight watching all those i'm sure i'm sure <laughs> yeah super cool yeah well cool yeah that's uh that's a good story about the uh design from the first gen first gen mini um frank stevenson the american he's american yeah is that yeah right? yep yeah cool nice well awesome story thanks for sharing that so uh, we're going to go into the news now, and I have uh, three quick stories to go over in the news. So the first is about the JCW uh, racing team. They uh, took two podiums this weekend or this past weekend out in Sonoma, um, second and third in one race and second in the other. So they're off to a good start already. Um, they do right. come... Yeah, they do come here to near where I live. Uh, the closest track is Watkins Glen, so... I do try and go out there and catch them, and I get to check out those cars. You know, when they're here, they're pretty awesome to see. Like, because they're taking a, a a stock mini and just like removing parts, and that's it. And it's, it's pretty crazy <laughs> to see what how they build those out. I have a couple couple of pictures from over the years mm. of checking them out, but yeah, they're Super pretty cool. cool. Yeah, so yeah, they're they're off to a good start. Uh, got some podiums already on the first race. 
and uh, some other ones coming up this year. So I highly recommend going to see them if you if they're anywhere near your area. They're pretty cool. I don't think I'd ever drive my Mini as fast as they drive those. So it's pretty, pretty <laughs> interesting to watch. You probably could. <laughs> I, you know, with the GP3, I probably could in theory, but would I? <laughs> oh, would that's be, true. You have a GP3. <laughs> would I be brave enough? Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and then uh, in other news, we have the uh, BMW blog talking about how the GP, speaking of the GP, is one of the loudest cars on sale right now. Um, they, really? Yeah. And, and it's not the exhaust that's loud, it's just the overall droney noise inside the car um so they said it's uh it's not the best road trip car you don't want to drive it for hours and hours um and it's a little harsh i disagree with all those things but you know i can see where it's not for everybody um but yeah i guess they measured some interiors for cat of cabins of, of several cars and the gp ends up being the loudest you know um, interesting yeah i mean they i i expect that it's I'm not surprised and I'm not upset over it, but you know, it's interesting. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Thing. I feel like in my JCW, it's interior is quite loud, but you only really notice it when you're in like uh, green mode because you kind of get rid of engine noise and you just have tire noise from the run flat. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The run flats. Yeah. Those, yeah. those are the pretty loud when, yeah, you can definitely hear those. But yeah. So GP is, GP is loud, but not in the way we want it to be loud. So. <laughs> Uh, and then uh finally to round out the news just came out today breaking news jd power uh has ranked um the customer satisfaction for uh consumers for one to three years of ownership of a car or lease or uh for lease or, or purchase and uh mini has ranked uh number one in the oh, wow. uh, mass consumer market so yeah it's it's Many owners are happy with their cars, um, and I think that's I. As much as we uh, often complain about the F fifty six and the F series, and you know how big they are and uh, whatnot, yeah. they, I think they're I think they're well built, and uh, they've they've taken care of a lot of the issues that had been problematic with uh, you know earlier generation minis. So it's good to see that customers are satisfied with minis overall. Hopefully, that'll get some uh, the sales numbers up in North America because. Yeah, we, we all know that they could go up a little bit more. They've been down lately. So, yeah, the minis are, yeah, minis are yeah. popular again. Yeah, people always complained about the uh, R-Series being super unreliable. Kind of got a name for itself. But I've had tons of F-Series. I've had R-Series, too, that are okay. But tons, yeah. of, a few F-Series, probably three now. Yeah. Yep. And every single one. I One I took to 200,000 kilometers, absolutely no issues. Um mm. Another one at 100,000 kilometers, my club in. And then I have my JCW, which is low 18. But, <laughs> but, but you know, the, I would say, and I saw this on your video a few weeks ago where you started up your JCW in the winter. Like the F series cars have no trouble starting up. I've never experienced any trouble with them starting up in the winter. Yeah. Where the R series, they, they can struggle a little bit. Um, the F series ones just always fire right up, no matter how long the car has been sitting. It's just it, it pretty incredible. I'm always worried that they, they're going to damage the end in the w engine the way they fire up so quickly after sitting for so long. But yeah, yeah, I, I think I think overall, yeah, the quality of the F uh, F series has gone up, which is which is good. Yeah. So this week's episode is brought to you by Keyless Entry. Are you too busy to pull the keys out of your pocket? Can you not find the keys in your pocket with all those other things going on in there? Phones, card, gum, whatever. Walk up to your mini if it's got a little black button on the door handle. You can press that and it'll unlock your door for you without even having to take your keys out of your pocket. It is, is that a sidewalk in the new blue? Yes. Ah, that is sharp. Where is that at? Yeah. That's mini in Mini Oakville in on Ontario. Looks ah. amazing. How far away is Oakville from you? It's always where I used. It was where I used to live in Ontario, so oh, it's a good it's, three or okay. four day journey if I oh, okay. get there. It's on this <laughs> side. Okay, all right. Well, maybe I'll go check yeah. it out. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but yeah, that okay. every time I look at it, it like when I first saw it, it was it was okay. I was like, oh, it's a facelift. But more more I look at it, I think I might even like it better than the current gen. So yeah, 
No, I like I, that blue. Is I love that blue. It, it's pretty close, not close, but it's closer to my countryman uh, in terms of. Oh blue. yeah. And I really like that shade of blue. I, I'm, I want I want minis to be more colorful and stand out a, a bit more, and that, that blue is definitely helping. And that's yeah, this car looks great. That we, we see the body color bumper here in the blue, and I I barely even noticed it. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, yeah. I think it looks awesome. Oakville, Mini of Oakville. All right. If anybody's near there, go snap a picture of that car. That's pretty awesome. So so my pick is this GP, and uh, it's it's got a wrap on it, obviously, which I think makes the red stand out a little bit more on the front uh, with, the, with the darker shade uh, on, in the wrap. But if you look closely at the wrap, it's got just the GP uh, word mark repeated over it, kind of like a, like a pattern. It's pretty cool. Um, and if you look also, I also like the, they did a GP on the roof as well. I think that's looks, it uh, looks pretty sharp. It's, it's a nice looking wrap. I, I'm usually not a huge fan. I'm excited to see people wrapping the GP. Um, I think it's, yeah. I always think it's really cool, but I'm not always a fan of all the wraps. Like some, some of them, I, I feel like just contradict the blade color if they don't wrap the blades, but this dark one, I think yeah. goes well with the dark blades uh and uh the gp ghost mark pattern in there is just really awesome i i really like it. it's very uh tr and it's very tron like with that uh design on the hood which is really the the gp design that's on the doors they just enlarged it and put it on the hood so it's it's a sharp looking looks like a race car yeah it does it does really <laughs> yeah throw a number on the side it would look absolutely yeah. like a race car yeah So yeah, uh, you can find me on YouTube uh, as the mini vlog and as in on Instagram as well as the mini vlog. And this week I have uh, a another coding video coming up using the Beamer Code app. And we're going to turn off the warning message on the backup camera. Now, I know not everybody has a backup camera and not everybody that has a backup camera has the warning message that pops up when you engage it. But for those of us in the U.S. market, uh, we do have that. So I'm going to show you how to turn that little message off. Kind of similar like uh, to the video I did the week before where we turn off the warning message that pops up uh, on startup. So that's where you can find me and what you can find coming out on my channel this week. How about you, Ethan? I think we got something exciting from you this week, yeah? Yeah, definitely. So, uh, well, first of all, you can find me uh, on YouTube, Car Creations, and then on Instagram at Car Creations YT. So this Saturday at 8 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, where I am, we will, we will have our 1,000 subscriber special premiering. So come yes. join us in the chat. And uh, yeah, we can, we can watch it all together and it should be amazing. Very excited. Congratulations again on that. I, I can't wait to see this video on Saturday. I don't think I'll be home when the video comes out. Um, yeah. I'll be traveling, but I'm, I'm hoping that uh, I can convince some of my friends to drive so that I can at least stream <laughs> it on my phone while I'm driving and enjoying the chat. So, yeah, so looking yeah, forward, yeah, forward to it. To see you there. Yeah. Keyless entry for those people that can't be bothered to take their keys out of their pocket. Hey, I've driven, I think, about 10 kilometers before I realized that I couldn't find my keys anywhere. Uh, I'm just jealous <laughs> that I don't have keyless entry. So. <laughs> oh, you don't on the GP? No. no. Oh, wow. Yeah. Would, that would, are you kidding me, man? That would weigh too much, that little rubber button. <laughs> I hey, went to you might be able to retrofit it. That's, yeah. Like, you can do that anything that these days. 